If I have 5,000 ounces of gold in my warehouse, I will sell 5,000 ounces on Comex. I'll sell it short. Now, it's a covered short because I have the metal behind it. I sell 5,000 ounces on paper. If the price goes down by $100 an ounce, and when you look at the amount of central bank buying that we've seen this year, which is exceeding just about any any time in history, you look at the central banks, they bought more gold over the last two years than any time in history, and that is continuing same thing with silver. We just got numbers that, you know, as an example, that India bought 60 million ounces of silver in October and another 20 million ounces in November on top of 304 million ounces in, in 2022. And these stars are all lining up perfectly. You see massive central bank buying uh, at the same time that they're they're selling and not rolling over their treasuries. There is a shift being made by the most powerful people in the world coinciding with these events. And, you know, I, I have felt for a very long time that it's been the suppression of the Western market that has enabled the large central banks to reposition uh, using the leverage, the, the suppressed leverage of the West against us. In other words, they're using the manipulated price to accumulate massive amounts of gold and silver, and we're seeing that. The the COMEX exchange was was designed originally to offset risk. That was the the reason it was it was uh, designed. For example, a farmer who plants a field of wheat in 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 the in the spring and wants to um, harvest, of course, in the fall, but in the interim, you have all sorts of variables. It could be a bumper crop, could be a rough year. You could have, you know, uh, pests that eat at your crop, or it could rain all the time, or maybe not enough. And so the futures market said, listen, we'll pair up the farmer and the baker, as an example. The baker needs the wheat to make his bread, and the farmer needs to sell his wheat in order to, to pay for his life. So, in other words, the farmer plants the crop and then sells his production forward into the marketplace where the, the baker says, I'll I'll buy that wheat from you in, in six months, and here's what I'm willing to pay, and, and here's what I'm willing to sell it at. And it offsets risk. So now the far farmer doesn't have to worry about uh, selling his his crop at the end of the year, he get, has a price he's happy for, and the baker knows he doesn't have to worry about getting wheat at the at the end of the uh, in the fall because he's happy he bought it at a price. Well, that was what it was designed for, and and the way that we use it as a metals company, if I have five thousand ounces of gold in my warehouse, I will sell five thousand ounces on Comex. I'll sell it short. Now it's a covered short because I have the metal behind it. It's not a naked short where I'm a commercial bank with gazillions of dollars and just sell, sell, sell to create a perception of reality. We'll get to that. But what it basically is, is this. So I have 5,000 ounces in my warehouse. I sell 5,000 ounces on paper. If the price goes down by $100 an ounce, I'm down half a million dollars in my, in my inventory, 500, 5,000 ounces at $100 a piece. That's $500,000 I'm out in physical in my physical holdings. But what I sold short on COMEX goes up commensurately. I'm market neutral. They offset one another. It is a way for me to offset my risk and not to speculate. Now, I asked my head trader, I don't know, might have been six weeks ago now already, but you'll get the point. I said to him, um, Ryan, what does it cost for us to control one COMEX gold contract? One COMEX gold contract is 100 ounces of gold, uh, paper form of gold. So you're talking $200,000 plus. And he said, well, the trade costs us just a few bucks, but we have to have roughly $7,000 in our margin account. That's it. So if the price never goes against you, you don't get a margin call. So I have seven grand in my margin account. I can control $200,000 worth of gold. Well, what if I'm a a commercial bank or a central bank with 500 million in my margin account. I have a half a billion bucks in my margin account. I now control $15 billion worth of notional gold and silver contracts. And they don't need to have the gold backing it in order because they have the deepest pockets. And they also know where all the pain points are. They're, they're the ones that sell the options largely. So they know where everyone is positioned. They know where they're going to get people to capitulate. So what they can do is they can paint the tape as it's uh, as it's called, they could control the narrative by buying up through resistance levels, triggering buy orders, 
or selling down through resistance levels, triggering sell orders, which begets more selling or begets more buying. And so it's a it's a corrupt system. It is one that is over leveraged in this case by about 35 times and rehypothecated, which means everyone who has a contract, um, uh, it, it represents 100 ounces of gold or in silver, 5,000 ounces of silver. Now, I haven't looked at the gold lately, but just the other day I was looking at the silver um, positioning and in the registered category on COMEX, that's the category where the bars that are supposedly backing the contracts are available for delivery. It was rehypothecated 1,490%. In other words, 1,500%. In other words, there is 15 times more contracts than there are bars backing them. Yeah, so, you know, you have these commercial banks with, you know, literally millions and millions and millions of dollars worth of short positions in gold and silver, meaning they're selling, driving the price down. When you short something, you do it with the anticipation and the duty to pay it back, but you are anticipating paying it back at a lower price. So these big banks can short the price and they'll drive the price down and then they can cover those shorts at a later date at a lower price. That's the anticipation when you sell short. When you go long, you anticipate the price going much higher. So in other words, you have all of these banks that are naked shorting. They're selling short into the market metal that they do not have. And they anticipate really never having to deliver it, but to cash settle. Well, if all of a sudden the price starts to go much, much higher, you have to get this metal somehow in order to put it back into the system or cash settle it. But the, the point is, is that as the price goes higher and higher and higher and higher, it forces people into the market. Now, if you say, I want to stand for delivery, where are you going to get that metal when no one wants to sell it as the price is spiking and you have to go outside the system to find it or wherever you're going to find it, it's going to cost you an arm and a leg. It can bankrupt you like that. And that's actually what bankrupt Bear Stearns in, in 2008. And, and that was admitted by um, the former CFTC commissioner, Bart Chilton, who admitted it on a podcast with Chris Marcus and then died a few days later. Coincidence? Not sure, but it was the only time he ever admitted the whole story about J.P. Morgan and their role in in uh, taking over Bear Stearns' short position. And to, but the point is, is they were massively short, short on silver, and it went from twelve dollars to twenty one dollars. It put them out of business. They couldn't cover it, and bang, they went out of business because of that leverage. So when the price starts to move against you very, very quickly, you have to. If it, you have to come up with that product or, or cover it with cash if you're lucky enough, but it can move up so fast that it can, in very, very short period of time, as everyone's covering, which means buying it really, in essence, is what it means. You're buying your the metal back to, to make your position whole. That act of buying and buying and buying and buying and buying on top of other people who are buying, it'll jack the price up so fast that those short positions get squeezed and very quickly can can run out of out of money and out of business